Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Drive Hayes, and this is a complete beginner's guide to the Nightmare Zone in Old School RuneScape. I'm going to cover absolutely everything you need to know, including what it is, how to get there, what to do, and then the most efficient ways to earn experience or points. I'll be fully explaining the most common methods of training and then share some handy tricks too. Like all my guides, this will be long and detailed. If you know what you're looking for, then use the timestamps in the description below. If you're new to this minigame, then grab a cup of tea, settle in, and let's learn the Nightmare Zone. 1. What is the Nightmare Zone? The Nightmare Zone is a members-only combat minigame where you can enter a dream state, then fight all the quest bosses you've killed before. The list of boss monsters you can fight is huge. I'll link the full list below. It's a single square room with no obstacles or cover, and the whole room is multi-combat. There's no time limit, you simply fight until everything is dead, or you are. There are several game modes ranging from one-on-one -on -one rematches to group survival. As you complete more quests, you'll unlock more enemies to fight. As you kill the bosses again, you'll earn Nightmare Zone points, which you can spend to unlock unique rewards, such as potions to use in the zone itself, or enchanting certain items with even more power. It's a safe minigame, so dying while in the Nightmare Zone won't count as an actual death. However, it's an instanced battle, so any items you drop on the ground will be lost forever once the dream ends. You're only able to use the Nightmare Zone when you've completed at least five quests containing viable boss monsters. It's run by a man called Dominic Onion. His name is a play on the word Dominion, as in RuneScape 3, a similar minigame is called the Dominion Tower. 2. How do I get there? The Nightmare Zone is just north of Yanil, and there are a few ways to get there. There's a minigame teleport directly there. Select the Nightmare Zone from the minigame menu and click Teleport. You can only use this if you meet the requirements to use the zone itself. I'll list those a bit later. If you've completed the Watchtower quest, you can just teleport to Yanil and then run east, or use a ring of dueling to go to Castle Wars and run from there. 3. Requirements Technically, there are no level requirements for the Nightmare Zone. However, you'll need to have completed at least five quests with Nightmare Zone viable bosses. The complete list is on screen now, but the five easiest quests would be Vampire Slayer, The Ascent of Archaeus, The Corsair Curse, Witch's House, and Lost City. With these quests, the Nightmare Zone has a realistic level requirement of 12 Hunter, 31 Crafting, 36 Woodcutting, 43 Prayer for Protect from Melee, and 20% Archaeus Favor. There are no specified combat requirements, but the Nightmare Zone is a combat minigame, so higher stats are better. If you're fighting a quest boss that has a specific mechanic or item needed to kill it, such as the Black Knight Titan needing Excalibur, you will not need that in the Nightmare Zone. If you're fighting a boss that has a heavily recommended item, like Elvarg needing an anti-dragon shield, or the Dagonoth Mother needing different elemental spells, those items will be on the floor of the room available to pick up when you begin. However, you won't be able to take them out the Nightmare Zone when you leave. 4. Equipment and Inventory As it's a safe combat minigame, you'll want to maximise your damage, so bring the best weapon you have in the style you're going to use. This really is just a case of use what you've got. If you're not using Absorption Potions, and I'll explain those later, you'll need some prayer potions to survive for a long time. Because of this, it's useful to wear prayer-boosting armour such as Prozolite. It's a good idea to bring a special attack weapon. Dragon Claws are brilliant but expensive, so a Granite Maul or Dragon Dagger is fine. Wearing Darok's Barrows set is very common. I'll explain why later in the guide. If you're looking to train strength or attack, then full Obsidian Armour combined with an obsidian sword will give you a plus 10% boost to accuracy and damage. 5. Game Modes and Paying The Nightmare Zone has 8 different variations. There are 4 game modes, and each mode can be played on easy or hard. On easy, 
The enemy you fight will be exactly the same as the one you faced in the quest, same levels and stats. On hard mode, each enemy will have their attack, strength, ranged, magic and hit points multiplied by 2.4. Their defense, however, will not change. There are no mechanical differences between easy and hard mode. It simply increases the enemy's hit points and offensive stats. Entering each mode costs a certain amount of coins, ranging from free to 26,000. If you have completed every quest in the game, the cost to enter a custom match is reduced by 10,000. To pay the fee, you'll need to fill up the coffer. It's a small coin bag just south of Dominic, inside the glowing enclosure. Interact with it and you can store coins inside. You can only deposit or withdraw in multiples of 1,000 and the coffer can hold the maximum stack value of 2.14 billion. To start a game mode, you'll need to talk to Dominic Onion. Have him prepare the dream mode you want to play, then drink the dream potion that's inside the small enclosure just next to him. The modes are Practice, Endurance, Rumble and Custom. Let's go through and understand them all. Practice. This game mode is free. You'll select a single boss you've previously killed and fight it one-on-one. -on -one. This mode gives you no experience and no Nightmare Zone points, so it's purely for fun. Enemies that have guaranteed drops, such as Elvarg dropping Dragon Bones, will still drop these things. Endurance. 1000 coins for normal and 5000 coins for hard mode. Endurance will see you fighting every quest monster you've unlocked one-on-one. -on -one. When you kill one, another will spawn. The game mode will end when you die or have killed every boss monster available. Rumble. 2,000 coins for normal and 6,000 coins for hard mode. Rumble is a multi-combat endless wave of enemies. Up to four enemies will spawn at once. When you kill one, another will take its place. You can play a Rumble solo or with friends. Up to five players can take on the dream together. If multiple people are joining a single rumble, each player must pay the entrance fee, and bosses will only spawn if every player in the group has completed the required quest. Points earned in this mode are divided amongst the team. You'll earn more points if you do more damage. To start a group rumble, the hosting player must talk to Dominic Onion and ask to start a group rumble. Then they'll be able to invite up to four other players from within the enclosure. If an invited player leaves the enclosure, they'll be removed from the group. Once the group is ready, the host drinks the dream potion as usual, and each other player will be asked by the on-screen prompt if they would like to join them. Because there's no time limit on the Nightmare Zone, and the rumble has no end, it can last until you get auto-logged out, which happens every six hours. Unlike everywhere else in RuneScape, the enemies will remain aggressive for the entire time. Custom. A custom match costs 22,000 for normal and 26,000 for hard. If you've finished every quest in the game, that price is reduced by 10,000. The final game mode is a custom rumble. This is essentially an endless rumble where you get to pick what bosses you'll face. You'll need to have at least five bosses selected. Then, just like a normal rumble, you'll fight four enemies at a time. Multiple copies of a single boss can be present at any moment, meaning you could end up fighting four of the same things. When starting a custom rumble, when you drink the Dream Potion, you'll be able to scroll through the list of all unlocked quest bosses and toggle them on or off. You must turn quest bosses on or off as a group from that quest. If you select the Desert Treasures bosses, you must have all of them active. If you turn one of them off, you'll turn the others off too. That's the modes covered. Now let's look at the power-ups we'll be able to find within the arena. 6. Power-ups While battling in the Nightmare Zone, power-ups will spawn every few minutes. They're all coloured orbs of light that float in the air and you'll get a notification in the game text box telling you one has spawned. To activate them, you just need to click on them. Each power-up will hover in the air for a while, and if not activated in time, simply disappear. The four power-ups are 
Recurrent Damage, a red orb. This lasts for 45 seconds once you've activated it, and will make you automatically hit the enemy again whenever you do damage. The additional hit will be for 75% of the damage you initially dealt, and you won't gain any experience for this additional damage. Zapper, a purple orb that will last one minute. Activating a zapper effectively turns it into a turret. It will fire waves of energy at all enemies that are near to it. It can shoot multiple enemies at a time and seems to have a maximum hit of eight. The zapper cannot hurt enemies that are immune to regular attacks or require special mechanics to harm, like the Dagonoth Mother. Power Surge, a yellow orb that will last 45 seconds. While under the effects of Power Surge, your special attack energy will refill by 20% every game tick. That's 0.6 seconds. This effectively means for 45 seconds, you'll have almost unlimited special attack energy. And you can Dragon Dagger Special or Dragon Claw your way through everything. The final power up is Ultimate Force, a bright white orb. Activating this will instantly kill all enemies in the arena, regardless of special mechanics. Killing enemies this way does not give you any experience or any Nightmare Zone points, and it's only useful for clearing out annoying, hard to kill enemies. Now we know what the Nightmare Zone is, how it works, and what to expect. Let's look at the rewards you'll get for doing it, then the most efficient setup for gaining huge amounts of combat experience or Nightmare Zone points. 7. Rewards While killing enemies in the Nightmare Zone, you'll earn combat experience just like a regular fight, but you'll also earn Nightmare Zone points. These are a specific currency that you can spend at the rewards chest just behind Dominic Onion. The amount of points you earn per kill depends on three main factors. One, the specific enemy you've killed. Two, whether you're playing on easy or hard mode. And three, if it's a custom rumble, how many total bosses you have made available for spawning. Not how many are currently spawned, that will always likely be four, but how many from the list did you actually tick on. The more you selected, the more points you'll earn per kill. While in the Nightmare Zone, you'll see a counter on the screen listing how many points you've earned in this specific dream, how many points you'll roughly get per hour if you carry on, and the total amount of points you have. To spend your points, once you're out the dream, just interact with the rewards chest north of Dominic. There are three tabs of rewards, resources, upgrades, and benefits. Resources are skilling materials like flax or rune essence. The most valuable item to buy from here is the herb box. The average value of the 10 herbs contained within adds up to 10,000. You're limited to only buying 15 of these per day. The upgrades tab allows you to imbue certain items to make them even better. There's a table on screen now showing you what can be imbued, what benefits they get, and how many points it will cost. You can, if you want to, remove the imbue upgrade from an item and you'll be refunded 80% of the points you spent. These upgrades are some of the best in the game and you should be aiming to imbue a Slayer Helmet, Salve Amulet or the Fremenic Rings as soon as you can. The last tab is Benefits. These are doses of potions you can only use in the Nightmare Zone and they'll make your trip last much longer. You buy them by the single dose and your available doses are stored in the four large barrels just inside the enclosure. You can check each barrel to see how many doses of that potion you have available, then withdraw the amount you want. These potions can only be used in the Nightmare Zone, and finishing a potion while in the Nightmare Zone will not leave you with an empty vial, they'll just disappear. The Super Ranging and Super Magic potions will boost your ranging or magic based on your current level. The tables on screen now show you the boost. The overload potion will boost your attack, strength, defense, ranging, and magic for five minutes. The boost amount is also based on your current level. And unlike most potions, the overload doesn't drop off slowly. It will remain fully boosted for the entire five minutes. However, 
The moment you drink it, you'll take 50 damage in five splats of 10. You cannot drink an overload if you are below 51 health, so you can't kill yourself by drinking one. When the boost effect wears off after five minutes, you'll get your 50 health back. Warning, while you can't kill yourself by drinking an overload, you can combine it with other damage. If you drink an overload, then instantly eat a rock cake or use a locator orb, it's possible to drop your health down during the overload's damaging ticks and take yourself to zero, so don't do that. Absorption potions act as a damage shield and grant you 50 absorb points per sip. Any damage that would be dealt to your health is instead removed from your absorb points. There's a trick to using these effectively. It's explained later on. 8. Maximum Experience A few of you probably jumped to this time code because you want to know how do you abuse the Nightmare Zone to earn the maximum amount of experience per hour? Well, let's talk that through. It doesn't matter if you're training melee, range, or mage. The general principles of maximizing your experience in the Nightmare Zone remain the same. So let's learn them. 1. You will auto-retaliate for 20 minutes. Enemies will stay aggressive for the entire 6 hours you're able to be here without being auto-logged out but you will only retaliate for 20 minutes without any input. That means you're going to have to click attack at least once every 20 minutes. 2. You will need absorption potions and overload potions. No matter what specified method you're using for training, these potions will be essential. Once you've completed a few easy rumbles or endurance fights using your own supplies and built some points up, spend those points to buy absorptions and overloads. 50 doses of each is a good start. I'll be assuming you're drinking an overload whenever you're able to, and you're staying absorption potted up to about 200 points. 3. Easy mode or hard mode? An interesting question, there's benefits to both. Easy mode means enemies will hit you for less damage, meaning you can spend more time in the zone without dying. More time in the zone means more experience, so you'd assume easy mode is the best choice. But there's a mathematical argument for hard mode being better. In hard mode, the enemy's hit points and defensive stats are increased, but their defense remains the same. This means they'll hit you more, but also have much higher health. An enemy with higher health means you can spend more time hitting your maximum and less time hitting the small damage to finish it off. Here's an on-screen example to explain, because some people do find this difficult to understand. Let's imagine the enemy has 30 hit points, and your maximum hit is 25. If by some miracle you manage to hit your maximum hit every time, and that same enemy kept respawning, it would look like this. 25 initial hit, then 5 to kill it. 25 again, then 5 again. 25, 5. Half your hits are 5, a smaller number, because the enemy only has that much health left. These smaller hits are going to reduce your average damage over time. But if the same enemy had a hundred health and the same situation happened, your hits would now look like this. 25, 25, 25, 25. You get the idea. You'd hit higher more because the enemy will have higher health for longer. These numbers aren't random, by the way. The trapped soul enemy has 30 health on easy and 100 health on hard. The answer is, if you have lower defense or lower tiered armor and want to be away from the keyboard for 20 minutes at a time, easy mode is a good choice. If you have higher defense or better armor and you want the absolute maximum experience per hour, then choose hard mode. 4. What game mode and enemies? For experience, we'll want a custom rumble. That's the mode where you can choose what quest enemies you face. We'll want to select five enemies with the best combination of low defense, high hit points, and low maximum hits. We also don't want to deal with any annoying mechanics, like dragon fire or being teleported around. So with that in mind, we'll choose the following five. Trapped Soul from the Ascent of Archaeus quest, Count Draenor from Vampire Slayer, don't worry, you won't need a hammer, stake, or garlic to kill him. Sand Snake from the Depths of Despair quest. King Rold from What Lies Below. And me from Lunar Diplomacy. 
If you've not done those five quests, there are others that are just as good, such as the Skeleton Hellhound from In Search of the Maya Key, Khazard Warlord from the Tree Gnome Village, the Black Knight Titan from Holy Grail, but only if you're melee ink, his range and magic defense is really high, and the Kendall from Mountain Daughter. Any combination of the above will keep the fight super simple. All the enemies will come to us, they're all melee fighters, and they can all be killed with no mechanics. Five, where do I stand? Stand in the dead center, here's why. If you hide in the corner, you'll only be attacked by up to two enemies at once, as you're covering two sides of you with the edges of the arena. This will reduce the damage you take. However, if a boss spawns in the corner far away from you, it will be so far away it may not move to attack you, and this can lead to a situation where you're spending long stretches of time outside of combat waiting for a boss to wander toward you. Standing in the dead center will mean you're being attacked from all four sides and instantly attract every boss that spawns. Yes, you'll take more damage this way, but you'll also be in combat the entire time, which will increase your experience. Six, which power-ups do I use? Almost none. Remember, power-ups don't give you experience, and that's why we're here. Recurrent damage will kill enemies quicker, but doesn't grant experience from its own damage. The same for the turret-style zapper and the room-clearing ultimate force. The only power-up even remotely useful to us is the yellow power surge, the one that refills our special attack energy. If you're lucky enough to pay attention and happen to see it, then activate it, switch to your special weapon, and go crazy for 45 seconds. And that is the maximum experience setup. A custom rumble with five good bosses, overload and absorption potions, standing in the middle, only using the power surge power-up. Remember to check later in this guide for the 1 HP trick and tips on how to use Darox. 9. Maximum Points More Nightmare Zone points mean we can buy more potions and imbue our things faster, so let's look at how to gain huge amounts of points per hour. The basic principles of gaining more points are the same regardless of which combat style you're using. 1. Do more quests. We're going to be using a hard custom rumble and you'll gain more points per kill if you have more enemies selected as on. The only way to increase your enemy selection pool is to quest, so go and do some quests. If you're struggling, I'll have a quest guide out for every quest eventually. 2. Absorption and Overload Potions Exactly the same as the experience tactic, absorptions and overloads are going to be essential. I find an equal mix of both works well. Remember to watch the absorption trick later in this guide. 3. Easy or hard? Hard mode, not even a choice. The amount of points you earn on hard mode is vastly more than easy. 4. What game mode and enemies? Here's where it gets a little more complex. We'll want to be doing a custom hard rumble. That's the mode where we can select what bosses we fight. We'll gain more experience and more points per kill if we have more bosses selected as available. So in theory, we can just select the whole list as on and start killing. But some of the bosses are extremely slow to kill or have really annoying mechanics, such as the Dagonoff mother changing colors and Camille from Desert Treasures freezing us and stopping our own attacks. So we'll want to select as many bosses as possible, but not the ones that slow us down. Here's my advice. Turn on every boss you can. Then go down the list and consider turning the following bosses off. You don't have to turn them off, but I'll give you a reason for blocking each one. Corrupt Lizard Man. He can poison us, which will ignore our Absorb potions. This, if you're doing the 1 HP trick, will kill you. Elvarg. Dragonfire will tear us apart unless we equip an anti-dragon shield which is not a good training item. Slagolith, only weak to attacks from a pickaxe. Dagonoth Mother, can only be harmed by various attacks as her color changes, very click intensive to kill. Dad, he has a knockback attack. It won't stun you and it won't interrupt your attacks, but it will push you back to the wall, so you'll have to run back to the center constantly. Tanglefoot, 
can only be killed by the magic secateurs. Black Knight Titan if you're ranging or maging, as he's very slow to kill. Ice Troll King again if you're ranging or maging. This guy has super high defense to both of those. Glod makes you either run away or charge at him. He's not hard to kill, it's just an annoying mechanic. Chronazon. You'll need to use all four blast spells to kill him, which will waste time. Giant Rock. He'll knock you back and stun you. Barrel Chest. He drains your prayer, which will make the rapid heal absorption trick impossible to do. Giant Scarab. If you leave this boss on, make sure you bring the Keris Dagger or a magical attack. It's strong against everything else. Now let's look at two quests that will hugely affect points and gameplay. Desert Treasures. Turning the Desert Treasures boss on will hugely boost our points per hour, as it contains four high-level bosses. However, each boss has a unique mechanic we'll have to deal with. Damis will drain your prayer when he reaches his second form. Fareed must be fought while wearing ice gloves, or when you attack him, you'll have your weapon unequipped. If your inventory is full when this happens, you'll drop your weapon on the floor. And because this is an instance-based minigame, if you leave, you'll lose the weapon permanently. Camille will cast Ancient Magics and freeze us. The freezing effect will interrupt our attacks and you'll need to keep clicking to keep attacking. Protect from magic will stop this happening, but it will also drain our prayer. The other main problem quest is Recipe for Disaster. Ideally, you'll want this toggled on because it's a huge point boost. However, it'll bring many bosses that we'll need to work around. Flambeed needs us to wear ice gloves again. Caramel will freeze and teleport around. The Gelatinoth Mother has the same color changing mechanic as the Dagonoth Mother, meaning we'll have to change combat styles often. For maximum points, you'll want to keep Desert Treasures and Recipe for Disaster on and be ready to adapt to whatever boss spawns and deal with them quickly. But we're not finished yet. Out of every enemy that spawns, we're only really interested in one. The Inadequacy. This big boy is from the Dream Mentor quest. He's only got 255 hit points and very low defense, but when killed in a hard rumble with max enemies, is worth a huge 74,000 points. Our strategy to get maximum points is kill the inadequacy as often as possible. If you're facing three awkward enemies and one simple to kill one, kill the easy one first, just for the chance of spawning the inadequacy. Five, where do I stand? Same as experience dead center, lets all the enemies come to us, keeps the combat fast. 6. What power-ups do I use? Unlike max experience, this time we do want to use power-ups, and we want to use them to help us find the inadequacy. The red recurrent damage will help us kill things faster for the chance of a spawn. The purple zapper will act like a turret and kill everything quicker. The yellow power surge will help keep our special attack full for 45 seconds. And now, the white ultimate force, the one that kills everything. Do you use this power-up while trying to get points? Seeing as enemies that are killed by it don't give you points. The answer is yes, but only at the right moment. If the inadequacy is spawned, don't even think about touching the power-up. Go and kill the boss and get all your points. If you have four enemies spawned that are all easy to kill and have no annoying mechanics, then just kill them. Ignore the power. -up. If you have several irritating enemies spawned, like the gelatinous mother or the desert treasure guys, then use ultimate force to clear the room because then you have four chances of the inadequacy spawning. And that is the maximum points per hour tactic. Hard custom rumble with as many bosses as you can, hunting down the inadequacy. 10. The 1 HP absorption trick. 
I've mentioned this trick a few times, so let me fully explain it. To do this trick, you'll need a rock cake from the Mountain Dwarf subquest of Recipe for Disaster, or a locator orb from Dragon Slayer 2. When you enter a dream, drink some absorption potions. When the enemy hits you, it will take that amount away from your absorption instead of your health, so a hit of 30 would take away 30 absorb points. Before the fight starts, use the rock cake or the locator orb to bring your health down to 1. Don't worry, you can't kill yourself using these items. The way combat in RuneScape works means your enemy's maximum hit can never exceed your current hit points. If the enemy would hit you for 30 and you only have 10 hit points left, you'll see a splash for 10, not 30. You cannot take excess damage over zero health, it simply reduces what the enemy would hit down to your current maximum. Because you only now have 1 HP, you've effectively reduced every enemy's maximum hit to 1. They will never be able to hit you for more. Even if their hit should have registered as 50, it will only count as 1, because you only have 1 health. This means each enemy will only drain your remaining absorb points by 1 each hit. This method can make absorb pots last for hours. Along with this, there's a trick to delay our natural healing and keep our health at 1. You'll naturally restore one hit point every minute. If you're playing on Runelight, you can see the red circle timer around the heart icon next to the minimap. The level 22 prayer Rapid Heal claims to restore our hit points twice as fast, but it does this in a really bad way. When you activate Rapid Heal, it instantly cancels the one minute timer and restarts it from zero but now you'll restore a single health when it reaches 30. If you flick Rapid Heal on and off quickly before the timer is up, you'll reset the timer, not use any prayer points, and remain constantly on one hit point. If you miss a Rapid Heal prayer flick, you can just Rock Cake or Locator Orb back down to one. Remember, if you're drinking overloads while doing this, when your overload runs out, you'll have 50 hit points instantly restored, meaning you'll need to overload again quickly or lose the benefits of this trick. This one hit point trick combines nicely with the next thing we need to look at. 11. Using Darox in the Nightmare Zone We've just looked at how you can combine Absorption Potions, Rock Cakes or Locator Orbs, and Rapid Heal Prayer Flicking to remain at one hit point and make your absorb points last for hours. But you can go one step further and combine this method with the Darok Barrow's armor. Darok's set effect means you hit more damage when you have lower health, and as you'll be keeping your health at one, it's the perfect place to use it. Darok's set effect grows stronger as you're missing more health. Because of this, it's recommended to use Darox once you have 90 or more hit points. Any less than 90 means it won't be as effective as other training methods, such as full obsidian with an obsidian weapon. 12. Slayer Tasks Most Nightmare Zone enemies will count for your Slayer Task, so if, for example, you're assigned to kill demons or trolls, you can enable any of the demon or troll enemies and kill them here. The only real reason you do this is because the Nightmare Zone is safer than the rest of Gilanor. 13. Money Making You can make money in the Nightmare Zone. You just need to earn enough points to justify the Dream Fee. Spending your earned Nightmare Zone points on herb boxes will give you the maximum return on points. Each herb box costs 9,500 Nightmare Zone points and has an average value of 10,000 coins. So if you can earn over 9,500 points in a dream while spending less than 10,000, you'll make profit by selling the herbs. 14. Why is there a cow in the enclosure? The Nightmare Zone was created when Old School RuneScape did not have a map editor, meaning developers could add to the world but not remove things from it. 
There was a cow NPC north of Yanil, and it will occasionally wander into the enclosure. There's actually an Easter egg where the cow may appear inside the dream. And that is a complete guide to the Nightmare Zone. We've covered everything. What it is, where it is, how to play, how to earn maximum points, what rewards there are, and why there's a cow involved. Thank you for watching, and thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon, who make all my videos possible. If you have any questions, then leave a comment below, or come chat to me on Twitch, Twitter, or Discord. Links all in the description. As usual, have a great day.